Hi everybody, it's Calico. Another episode of Beyond the Body. Wow, this has been a week, a big week for forgiveness. And um, it started with a movie gathering we had um, with a Michael Moore movie, uh, Where to Invade Next. And David Hoffmeister did a commentary on it. Um, I had seen this movie a while back when it came out. I happen to be a personal Michael Moore fan. Um, he fit right into my former belief system of conspiracies. And um, so he was just edgy enough to, to really speak my heart during those times. So this was kind of an interesting thing. David's doing the movie <laughs> Where to Invade Next. Okay, we'll watch it with David and Holy Spirit. <clears throat> what came out of that was a huge opportunity for me. Um, much to my surprise, and <laughs> no one could have been more surprised than I, I had a lot of anger come up, a lot of anger. And um, I shared this in an expression session a couple of days ago that I was shocked. I was furious about the so-called or closure that I went through with Chase Manhattan Bank. And um, when they were talking, within the movie, they were talking about Iceland and how Iceland dealt with their bankers, which they, <clears throat> I think Michael, to quote Michael, he said, they were sent far, far, far away. And the camera honed in on the, the tundra of Iceland uh, to some prison somewhere. And what came up for me was, I was right in the foreclosure. I was right. They were taking this property over a clerical error that Chase Manhattan had done. And I couldn't get anyone at Chase Manhattan to hear me. And so I was seeing myself really deeply. Once again, this belief came up, I was unfairly treated. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> um, okay, so that takes us to chapter 27, the healing of the dream, the picture of crucifixion. The wish to be unfairly treated is a compromise attempt that would combine attack and innocence, which was so powerful. I was like, okay, well, obviously I was innocent. They made the clerical error. I'm innocent. Therefore, I'm going to attack them. And I thought I had really forgiven this. I must say, I really went through a whole lot of forgiveness on one level. And this dropped it into a much deeper place. Here I'm experiencing physical pain. And in here, in chapter 27, it even talks about, but every pain you suffer, do you see as proof that is, he is and here it is in chapter 27. But every pain you suffer, do you see as proof that he is guilty of attack? So when I was watching this Michael Moore film, I'm finding so much anger coming up. I am like furious and I am experiencing pain. So I'm seeing myself as innocent. I'm seeing them as guilty and I am creating every pain you suffer. Do you see as proof that he is guilty of attack? Oh my God, here we go. <laughs> Slipping further down the rabbit hole. It's like, yes, absolutely. Holy Spirit, help me see this differently. Help me see that sin is impossible. And if I see sin is impossible, then attack is impossible. That innocence is everywhere. And this, So this leads us into the laws of chaos, which is also a lesson that I had this week that brought forth these laws of chaos. The second law of chaos, dear indeed to every worshiper of sin, I was a worshiper of sin, I wanted to make Chase Manhattan wrong, <laughs> is that each one must then sin and therefore deserves attack and death. 
Well, I tell you, the anger that I had coming up in the expression session that we hold here at lunch was fury. Fury. I wanted to kill the bankers again. I thought we had been through this. But no, I was like furious. They deserve to die. <laughs> and real, realistically, I mean, my anger was big. But even if you have a resentment against someone, that is a desire for someone to die. Any sin, anything other than innocence that we are seeing is our desire to see something die. So this is powerful for those of us that have pain or believe in pain. And this is basically everybody that's breathing. This holds true. These laws of chaos hold true. The two first two laws of chaos are very closely aligned. One is the belief that sin is real and deserves attack and death. The first law of chaotic law is truth is different for everyone. So the fact that I'm dealing with Chase Manhattan means that that truth is different for me. But what the truth of the laws of chaos is talking about, all these illusional truths, you know, the laws of the land that we believe in, this is right, that's wrong, keeps us from really going vertical with the only truth, the truth of love. And so the laws of chaos are sh showing us that which blocks us to this law of love. The first bit being they're different for everyone. So where I may be having a personal vendetta against Chase Manhattan, someone else may hate their mother or someone else may um, be angry at the immigrant situation. There, those are the laws of chaos that seem different. But in reality, these beliefs in the law of the land keep us from really establish, establishing a connection, establishing a connection with the one only true law, the law of love. So the first one is that these are different for everyone. The second chaotic law is that every sin demands attack and death. Wow, this is not looking good. <laughs> the third, as the Course says, the third preposterous belief that seems to make chaos eternal. For if God can, cannot be mistaken, he must accept his son's belief in what he is and hate him for it. This is where, if I believe in sin, then God has to hate sin too. And God doesn't. God only loves. So this third chaotic law is really where there's a, there's a huge turnaround. If I'm believing in sin, then God must believe in sin and everything's copacetic. You know, God will hate those people that are doing wrong just as much as I will. But if in truth, God is only love, this is impossible. So what that, how this, oh man, follow me on this one. This turns things around. If... <clears throat> I am seeing sin, and God doesn't see sin. Now, I'm pissed at God. It's like, well, that's not right. You need to make them wrong. They're wrong. <laughs> and this is where the conflict comes in. I start seeing God as the enemy. <laughs> I mean, this is nuts. Oh, man. I... And this is where pain comes from. This is where illness comes from. This is where devastation of all kinds comes from. This is where death comes from. So just join with me in this process. It gets better. This is like reading the greatest mystery story ever told. This leads to the fourth law of chaos, which if, if the others are accepted must be true, this seeming law is the belief that you have what you have taken, that you have what you have taken. By this, another's loss becomes your gain. Okay, this is where we get into um, the belief that something can be taken from me. The belief that 
if I give you something, I will lose something. <laughs> this doesn't work out well in the, the law of love. So I want to just share the past three days. Um, last night, oh man, so I went through this expression session, had a lot of anger coming up, and I said, Holy Spirit, I'm willing to see this differently, but you've got to do the heavy work because I don't see how I'm going to make peace with this. I thought I had, obviously didn't, and here it is again. Last night, Holy Spirit often takes me on vision quests at night, and I went on a doozy. I felt like I went through the supposed parable of Calico and seeing everywhere I have ever felt I gave you X, now I should receive Y. I gave you Y, now I should get Z. It was this um, checks and balances of spirit that I've really lived my life under. You know, I mean, even to the point of people would come to me as a, as a chiropractor and I'll give you money, you give me a, an adjustment. You know, it's like give me something for something in order to. That's what Holy Spirit showed me last night. It was all, everything in Calico's parable was in order to something else. You know, I will work in order to get a be beautiful house. I will love in order to get love in return. I will do everything and anything in order to get what I think I deserve. And here it is as a law of chaos. <laughs> so, so I went through this dream, really got the entire parable of, of my life, Calico's life, has been doing something in order to get something in return. So the fourth law of chaos, the seeming law is the belief that you have what you have taken. So I can only be what I get. I'm not whole and complete by myself. I have to give something in order to get something. By this, another's loss becomes your gain. And thus it fails to recognize that you can never take away save from yourself. So the only way something can be taken from myself is if I believe in this law of giving and receiving. As if I get, someone else is giving and lost to them. If I'm giving, it's a loss to me, but I'm doing it in order to get something else. Is it any wonder that the world looks the way it, it does? <laughs> this is truly profound. Yet all the other laws, the laws of chaos, the first one, that everything is different, all the truths are different for different people. The fact that sin is possible and it deserves attack and death. And that I'm going to, I have to give in order to receive and if by giving i'm losing something but i'm getting something better that i see that i want more it's a very convoluted way of thinking but this is the way we've been trained to think so in this this uh fourth principle another's loss becomes your gain and thus it fails to recognize that you can never take away save from yourself so we're whole and complete. We don't need to beg and barter in order to get more, in order to be better and happier. We're whole and complete, completely as ourselves. So anytime we're seeing this, I'm going to give you something in order to get something back, we're actually cutting our legs off for lack of a better reason. Yet all the laws lead to this. For enemies do not give willingly to one another, nor would they seek to share the things they value. For what your enemies would keep from you must be worth having, because they keep it hidden from your sight. So I know there's, some, there's something out there I need to fulfill on myself. And, and they're trying to get it from me. And this is the whole thing with Chase. I had my dream home 
and they were taking it from me. They were taking something that I loved dearly from me. And this was setting off these laws of chaos big time. They deserve to die. They deserve to die. And I kept looping. And it kept taking me deeper. Don't get me wrong. I've, I've really worked on this quite a bit. And it kept taking me deeper. And this last one, with all the information that Holy Spirit's been giving me on the laws of chaos, made so much sense. It's like I have to give up this idea that I need anything in order to be joyous. That I need to do anything in order to be joyous. Oh, this is a this is a this is a core belief. I can still feel it kind of flipping through my psyche. All the mechanisms of madness are seen emerging here. The enemy, Chase Manhattan, <laughs> made strong, big bank, by keeping hidden the valuable inheritance that should be mine. Your justified position, my justified position, an attack for what has been withheld, they took my house, and the inevitable loss the enemy must, must suffer to save myself. They must pay for this. They must be brought to justice. And this is big. Because I have to humble myself enough to go that I'm complete. With or without a million dollar property, I'm complete. And this is huge. And now you understand the reason why you found it not. For it was taken from you by this enemy, in hidden where you would not think to look. I had no way to get back at them. He hid it in his body, making it the cover for his guilt, the hiding place for what belongs to you. Now must his body be destroyed and sacrificed. And this was the anger that was coming up at the expression session. I wanted blood. Yeah, I was back and I thought, oh my God, here I want to kill people again. <laughs> that you may have that which belongs to you, belong to me. It was taken from me illegally. <laughs> his treachery demands his death, that you may live. And you attack only in self-defense. My innocence. I'm innocent. I'm innocent. <laughs> but what is it you want that needs his death? Can you be sure your murderous attack is justified? Unless you know what it is for. And here a final principle of chaos comes to the rescue. It holds there is a substitute for love. This is the magic that will cure all your pain. And if you haven't watched the segment on pain, you may want to watch that next or before this. If you're watching this, turn it off and go watch that now. <laughs> because this is where pain comes from. This is the reason you must attack. Here is what makes your vengeance justified. Behold, unveiled, the ego's secret gift, torn from your brother's body, hidden there in malice and in hatred for the one to whom the gift belongs, me. <laughs> he would deprive you of the secret ingredient that would give meaning to your life, the substitute for love, born of your enmity to your brother, must be salvation. It has no substitute. There is only one. And all your relationships have but the purpose of seizing it and making it your own. It's the whole reason we have special relationships, is to get something. Get love, get friendship, get, 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 get. And in the getting, there's, there's this whole chaotic law principle coming into play. Never is your possession made complete, and never will your brother cease his attack on you for what you stole. And, and, this is, and this is in reverse. <laughs> Never will I cease my attack on you for what you stole. <laughs> Never will God and his vengeance upon both, for in his madness he must have 
the substitute for love and kill you both. Oh my God, this is where we, we make enemies of God. Because if God doesn't see this as wrong, then God has to be my enemy too. And so I'm going to have to kill both of you off. Because you're both bad. <laughs> These are the laws on which your sanity appears to rest. These are the principles which make the ground beneath your feet seem solid. And it is here you look for meaning. These are the laws you made for your salvation. They hold in place the substitute for heaven, which you prefer. I would rather keep this illusion alive than live in heaven. Yeah, this is the way, you know, an eye for an eye. This is where we, our whole foundation of everything is based on. I'll make money, I'll work, I'll make money, I'll give you, and then you lose, and I get. And, you know, this is, this, these laws of chaos run the entire illusion. And I'm going to jump down. I, I highly recommend you to read this, <clears throat> this whole chapter, chapter 27, I believe. Um, I'll check when I'm done here. Um... The laws of chaos govern all illusions. So the final principle of the chaos of chaos laws is that there is magic that will cure your pain. I'll get justice within the legal system, and this is what came up from watching the movie, that somehow I didn't get my justice, that this was taken from me illegally, and I want justice, whether or not just to be told, you're right. You're right, Calico. And that won't bring me heaven. That'll make me right within a, a delusion. Which is what my dream came up with last night. <laughs> I mean, it was not, it was a nightmare. I went through, <clears throat> you know, it reminds me of uh, the Christmas story. You know, it's like being taken on a journey by the angel of darkness. This is the way you've lived your life. It's like, oh, I'll give you this if you will give me something. I'll give you this and you give me this. And when it works out and I'm feeling, okay, that's, that's equal. I gave you X, you gave me Y, and that feels fair. But when it doesn't feel fair is where I get trapped into the chaotic laws. Even though even when I feel fair, it's fair, I'm still within the laws of chaos because I'm believing that I, this giving and receiving has to be of equal value. Then if it's not of equal value, that's not fair. And then I'm going to go find agreement somewhere from somebody that'll go, oh, yes, you were definitely right. Oh, okay. Well, as long as I'm right, I guess I can put up with this. You know, we were talking about this, Anna and I were talking about this the other day. It was beautiful. You know, it's like I can, and this is, I have a huge capacity, as I think all of us do, but this is, I'm doing this for my own benefit here. Um, I have a huge, have had a huge capacity for having horrible things just off to the side, but I don't look at them. Oh, I'm just not going to go there. I, no, I'm not going to go there. Ugh, no, I'm not going there. So I keep my focus on something else. What A Course in Miracles is asking of us is to go into it. It's like, oh, shit. You know, it was like Chase Manhattan. As long as I didn't look at it, I did a lot of healing, and I thought, okay, that's good enough. But it was still there. It was in the in this giving and receiving, this feeling like in order to. I'm not completely innocent because I still believe in sin because they're still over there, and I still feel like that was a pretty shitty thing to do, Chase. Okay? So I had to actually look at it. And it's like, this is what A Course in Miracles is asking us to do, is bring them all to the forefront. Look at all this stuff. Because if you don't, you're going to end up in pain, which is what I had last week. And I had to get magic to help me with through the pain. Of Finally, it was over here enough going, hello, hello, no, 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 no. And then I blew at an expression session. It's like, fuck, this is for shit. <laughs> This shouldn't be working this way. And then I'm shown the laws of chaos. And I was taken on a dream sequence of my entire life, of all the checks and balances I've had within my life, of 
you know, I'll give you, you give me. And as long as we're playing by the fair rules, everybody's going to be happy. But if one thing goes wrong, like Chase, and there's no justice, it was just over here on the side going, hello, hello. And I was like, I don't want to go there again. But I have. And I've, I really, it blew up. I was able to deal with it with Holy Spirit. It feels, I don't know, more will be revealed. I don't know where, where I am. But I know that the laws of chaos finally make sense to me. And I hope this clears up for any of you. But again, I'm not doing this for you. <laughs> this is a program I'm doing for myself. Yeah. It's me and Holy Spirit. <laughs> so for now... One last thing, hey, Michael Moore, if you're watching this, hi Michael, I love you. Um, during my years of conspiracy theories and angry at the world, Michael was kind of a, an ever-present companion of speaking the dream in the clearest way I, I could put it in words. But it was all based on the chaotic laws. And um, one of the things I saw with this movie and it was a beautiful thing to watch, is um, this was a different kind of movie by Michael. Um, where to invade next? He's getting softer. And I realized it's because I'm getting softer. And um, so it was beautiful to see a softer Michael Moore. And I get that's just my reflection of myself, which is, yeah, this, this program works. And if you're willing to really face some of the scary stuff, scariest stuff you're ever going to face, um, I guarantee there's peace behind all of it. And so for that, I end another segment of Beyond the Body. I love you all so much. Um, yeah, my heart is full and uh, it's been a wild week so far. More will be revealed. Bye, everybody, from beyond the body to heaven. <laughs> I join you there. Bye. It was just a tiny mad idea at which the Son of God